Welcome to Bird Tech. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the revolutionary comma body. All right, welcome back. So if you don't know, the Comma 3 is a uh, device that allows you to drive the car. Now, I actually have a Comma 3 and it's absolutely amazing. On road trips, I use it. And the thing about the Comma 3 is that it's this little device here that makes it driving quite a bit better here. So as you can see, it kind of drives for you. It's actually rated better than Tesla's autopilot. And I can agree with that. And so what it is, it has two cameras. One is for close and then the other is for long range. And you can kind of see, this is the setup here, and you can see that the person is just kind of putting their, their hands on their knees. And, and driving with the Comma 3 is really like this here. If, you have, if you're on highways like this, uh, it makes driving half as difficult and, you know, or half as frustrating, which is a really good thing. Now, the other thing is that all the software is open source. And it comes with all this uh, cool stuff here. And um, it's it's very, very cool. Now, if you live in the United States, you have these directions here and it doesn't have traffic lights or stop signs, et cetera. And that's gonna be a very difficult problem to solve. Maybe more on that on a different time here. But as you can see here, we can, um, uh, it's pretty awesome. And I absolutely love it. The only thing um, that I would say it's not good for is like really windy roads. It, it can't do a good job at that, but like anything before that, it's actually pretty good. But it came out with a comma body. Now, the thing is, is that the, once I first heard of this, I thought it was really silly. But there's a lot of method behind the madness here. Now, first of all, I should mention that the comma three, the way that it's set up is, is really set up really well from a software's point of view. It's open source and everything that they're doing is, you know, is is making an end product really good here. Now, the comma just recently received some some investor funding and this comma body is incredibly massive here. Now, it might seem really silly and frivolous, but it's not about the technology today, it's about where it's going. So we all know that the Tesla bot is going to be a thing here. Now, this is supposed to rival the Tesla bot here. Now, what they're doing now is that they actually have or are getting data from working in like human spaces today. Now. What if when you go onto the comma three, they're getting lots of data for car spaces, spaces where cars exist, but they're not getting data for a human six. So like if you look at this, there's tables, there's chairs, it has to be able to navigate in their area here. And the comma three is going to be able to move around it. But again, you know, having a robot move around is just the first block of a major brick wall. OK, so you can see here that this is what the comma three is supposed to be. It's about, I guess it's about four feet, eight inches or 142 centimeters, depending on what you want here. Now I'll go to the comma shop later here, but it's meant to be in a human environment. And what it's going to do is it's on this kind of little um, Segway type uh, thing here. And you can see that everything's in here. Now, what this is supposed to do um, is this is again, supposed to be in human spaces, but that's not where everything stops here. I'm gonna come back to this for a second here because I want to talk a little bit about the knee. Now, the knee itself is kind of like motor so it can move up and down and then kind of like pivot, um, et cetera. Now, this, again, it seems really silly <laughs> to do this, but once this works, right, the next step is to be able to manipulate the environment. Now, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, has said the real test for one of these robots here is that can they make you a cup of tea, okay? Find some tea in the house, make it for you. And once it gets to that point, then you have at least some kind of robot here. Now, personally, I would love to have a robot that just kind of cleans everything up for you. You know, it, it kind of activates when you're away from the house, it cleans it cleans your apartment or house for you. That would be really awesome, okay? The other thing that it will do is like, you know, kind of clean your kitchen, right? Put the dishes in the dishwasher, put the dishes back from the clean dishwasher there. So like for me personally, if $1,000 could do that, I would easily spend that today. But of course, that's not exactly where it is. But again, this is the first brick of an actual major building uh, here. All those other things kind of move into place here. So once they get it working through space, with just a single height, that's step one. Step two is to be able to move up and down and all around, uh, at least with the knee, and then move with the wheels here. And then once robotics gets cheaper, because the thing about robotics is that there, while there are getting to be more and more advances in the actual robotics themselves, a lot of the advancements comes from robotics getting cheaper, not necessarily moving uh, or just getting more impressive. And even though that's still happening, because like, you've probably seen the Boston Dynamics video, every day that's getting better, but it's a lot of like this stuff that's getting cheaper here. 
So for about $1,000, you can get this here. Now there's a lot of really cool things here. It has the cameras. It's trying to do the, the uh, control here. It runs on all open source software, which is, which is crazy here. So what George Potts is doing, the founder of Kama, is he's trying to make a open source Tesla bot alternative. And the thing is, is that right now, Tesla doesn't have, like, I can't go buy like a basic Tesla bot and, and use it here. So Kama is going to get a huge leg up when it comes to all the data that's going in here. Now, of course, if you wanna buy them, it's $1,000 here. Now, personally, I don't think I need one. This is way too frivolous of a, of a purchase for me. But if it, if it is for you, then if it isn't for you, then obviously you can go and get one here. I think it would be a really cool thing to have like around an office, right? Like if you had like a big open office kind of concept, I think this would be a really good kind of gimmick thing at the time and it would help further this technology now the other thing that i should mention here is that you notice it has wheels right now obviously not every house is one floor right i could see this working with an apartment but apartments are kind of small but the thing is is that once the wheels work right they'll be able to get better robotics to go upstairs and downstairs etc here so those are the kind of the things that i i actually really like about this this comma is a really good company i cannot recommend buying uh, the comma three enough if you drive a lot and you know i would say the best things about the comma three is big open highways if you have to drive like one two three hours on a highway that looks like this oh yeah it is absolutely 100% worth the money. The other thing that it's really good for is stop and go traffic here. You know, uh, recently I had to go in rush hour to, well, I'll basically drive about 30 minutes and I used mostly the comma while it was there. And it makes driving so much simpler. And the other thing about comma is that when they update something, it gets way better, right? Like if I had a problem with, let's say 8.1, uh, 8.2 is just, incredible right it and then it gets better and better and you don't think it could get better because it does a really good job but it does it does get better and eventually it's going to be able to show you or to be able to do traffic lights and traffic stops that's a really hard thing to do and forget about uh roundabouts or traffic circles uh, that's going to be very hard to solve here. And, you know, where I live personally, there's a lot of very, very weird intersections. In fact, yesterday, I actually missed an intersection because it was just so odd. Uh, and, you know, in places like, in older places like Europe, the older the place it is, like the weirder the intersection is going to be. So there's a lot of things to solve here. But the more that they're out there, uh, it's better here. Now, I think there's only been maybe like five or 10,000 of these comma threes sold. Considering how good that is, that is a massive uh, achievement because Tesla has thousands of cars, whereas this only has like a few thousand, right? Uh, I should say Tesla has hundreds of thousands of cars. Well, this only has a few thousand. So the software is absolutely incredible. It also tells you the speed limit, which I kind of find is nice because how often are you driving and you say, hey, look, where's the speed limit here? So it comes with all this stuff here and uh, hooking everything up is kind of difficult here. I think you need a car after 2015. Um, but you know, this, you can see it's in the kind of like a newer Hyundai and yeah, it just sits there. You turn it on. It's like cruise control. Uh, what it's doing here is a lot of cars now have like adaptive cruise control. It's like adaptive cruise control on steroids, right? It's really good. And you can see that there's, you know, it's a very nice system here. Now this is of course the third iteration of comma. The, the first two were kind of like phones, but what they really needed was these two cameras here. And when you see it on, like, if I go back here to see like this, uh, if you can kind of like zoom in on this here, what it really needed to do is it really needed to go and look far into the distance. Cause you do that as a driver. Like if you're driving on this particular road here, you're looking at this car here, but I think what they tried to do was try to do it in a way that, you know, the machine learning will be able to pick up all those pixels, which was in theory possible. But I think by adding that extra camera, it just makes things a lot better here. So I'm looking forward to buying the comma four, whatever that may be. I'm very, very excited about all of this here. And the comma body, while it seems like a very silly concept here, again, uh, it is the first brick of a major building. And I think comma might even be the first company uh, to do a Tesla bot type app uh, or type robot here. Uh, because it's getting the software here. And if I could invest in Kama, I absolutely would. So once they invest in, um, once they invest in Kama, if that, if that's ever open, I would highly recommend investing in it. Of course, this isn't investment advice. That's what I'm going to do. You don't have to do it, but I'm going to do that again, not investment advice. 
<laughs> so, but I'm, I'm gonna do that here. Uh, so anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Let me know what you think of the combo body. Is it good? Is it bad? Please comment on this channel. This channel does not get enough comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Yeah.